So, hello everybody, thank you for coming this evening to this talk about connection string attacks. Uh, first of all, thank you. I know it's Saturday, it's late, everybody wants to be in another place having beers and so on. And for us it's, it's very good to have you here, so thank you very much. First of all, let me introduce ourselves. He is uh, Jose Palazón, uh, Palaco. He's working on Yahoo as a uh, software architect. And I'm Chema Alonso. Uh, I'm a, a Microsoft MVP in enterprise security, but I'm not working on Microsoft. I'm working in a, in a security company in Spain called i64. The talk for today is about connection string injection attacks, but before that, I would like to make a quick introduction about our country, about Spain, because maybe you don't know it, but you love Spain. <laughs> Viva España. <laughs> well, this year we won the World Cup, so we are very proud of this. I'm sorry for the Argentinian Woo! people and the rest of the world. <laughs> I'm sorry for the, for the people from Germany and, and Holland. Well, also, we got very good uh, sports. Pau Gasol, very well. Rafa Nadal and Alberto Contador. We are very proud of that, guys. It's, and we got sexy people like <laughs> Antonio Banderas. Oh my God, Antonio. Penelope Cruz. Oh, no. And of course, Che Alonso and Jose Palaco. Oh, That's yeah. very nice, guys. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> well. Some, uh, maybe uh, everybody knows where is Spain, but that's this Europe and Spain is not that country. It's not that country. <laughs> Spain is that small country in the south of Europe. You know, we got a long, long beaches around the whole country. So it's a very nice place to be. Please come to Spain. We will love you. And of course in Spain we got party f parties for everybody. We got the most famous party. This is San Fermines, it's the, the greatest part, party ever. It's very nice and it's very simple, you only have to run. It's quite simple. <laughs> and of course we got food and flamenco. Everybody knows flamenco, of course, and that's very nice. Uh, we got uh, very good people like Dali, painters like Dali or Picasso, maybe you know it. Who knows, Picasso and Dali. Yes, uh, Picasso. Despite all the good things that Spain has done for the world, we have though to apologize on behalf of the government and pretty much 80% of the population for the Macarena. So, oh, about Macarena. <laughs> well, sorry about I that. I like it. I like the Macarena. How many of you have been dancing Macarena sometime in your life? Please confess it. Macarena. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. Let's get into business. <laughs> okay, so. What we're actually going to talk today is connection string attacks. So to define what this is, so basically a connection string is how do you define how your application, like a web application or any other kind of application, is going to connect to a data source. Being a data source, either a database, <coughs> LDAP, uh, some kind of file system based, XML, kind of whichever you want to use. Um, and in particular, what we're going to focus our, our work here is database connection strings. If you look at that slide, what you have here is the very minimal, uh, minimal database connection string that you, could put, that you can put together. It's in four lines for the sake of clarity, but you could consider that as like a single string, where what you have is the data source, that is the server where, you, where your data source is going to be, your database in this case. You have the schema. Like you, of course, you, have, you might have many da uh, databases in your server, so you're going to choose which one you want to use. And then you have the credentials, username and password. Um, as I said, it is like a string. And this is an example of a piece of code where you can see how these uh, strings are constructed. Usually, when an application connects to a database, um, there's two ways of doing that. It's either a static string or it's a dynamic string. If this is a static string, a string then you just put everything together, like data source, something, semicolon, uh, the schema, something, semicolon, username, and password. If, there's, if this is dynamic, if for so, some reason, and we will see the cases afterwards, you want uh, to use dynamic parameters here, you have to create this string somehow. Unfortunately, most of the times you create this string by simple con concatenation. And I think we all know more or less where this is going, right? So 
that's an example of how you put together a stream by concatenation. And you can see a kind of pretty much good suspect there to allow us to, to play with that. There's a character there that we're using to separate the field, and we might be able to abuse that. So that's all. We finished. That's all. It's, it's <laughs> you can go. <laughs> well, some of the cases is not needed even to inject to extract data from the connection stream. There are a lot of easy queries that you can throw to, through, through Google to discover a lot of information from connection stream. Just looking for uh, login pages with a data source parameter, and you can discover, of course, the data source, the username, and the password. The password is this. Uh, no, it's quite simple to do this. There are a lot. In this case, this is uh, this is an example with an IBM. There are a lot of cases. Just playing with Google, you can discover a lot of information from uh, connection stream. And in some other cases, the database administrator creates uh, a special file, which is only a plain text file, but with a special ex extension, which is UDL. And that file stores the information of the connection stream. So you can just use Google to discover that kind of files, just searching for the connect file type UDL password. And there are a lot of cases. In this example, there is a very complex password you will never figure out what it is. <laughs> and you can do it. Let's do it. We got time. So just Google. So X. UDL password. That's all. Oh. Oh. No. Oh. It's the other one. Thanks, Google. Yeah. <laughs> they even suggest how to do it right. Well, as you can see, there are uh, files with uh, information about, about the database, about the connection stream. Let's, let's download one of these, for instance. Let's see. One of my country. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, no, no. Which one? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, whatever, this one. The first one, okay. Let's store the file. Okay. In Windows, it's, it's quite simple because you only have to double click the file. And Microsoft has a special tool to connect against that databases, and you got the username, the password, and you just test the connection. It's in Spanish because in Spanish it's better. But you only have to click this button, and that's all. So it's quite simple. Okay, <laughs> so back to business. Uh, Let's review very briefly how a web application connects to a database. Because uh, when it comes to authentication with, authenticating with the database, there's a big uh, main, main separation that we want to do here. A uh, usual kind of web application that you probably have built, uh, you take control of your users. So you have to take care in, inside the database to create the columns and tables for the whole authentication and authorization scheme. So that's how you manage the, the, the users in your application. Uh, there's other, th uh, for, well, I, I'll explain that in a bit detail later. There's the other main way of authenticating is when you don't want one single user authenticating to the database. And then you use uh, you, you have your users inside the database. You actually want your users to be the database users. Okay, so the in this slide we have the two in the, the two parts are how the strings are constructed here, and the main difference is if you're going to use the integrated security, which is no when you want to handle your authentic authentication, or yes when you want to use the system authentication. Okay, um, usually when you have the first one. Uh, most cases you have one single user that the application, the entire application uses to connect to the database and then you do whatever. That is not very right because if something goes wrong then whichever user, no matter how your permission scheme is in your application, if something is wrong, like you have a SQL injection uh, problem, then you can exploit that with, the, with whichever permissions that user has in the database. And usually, you, well not usually, always, if you're using just one, one user, that 
that user needs permission all over the database for writing, reading, and modifying and that. So if you have the chance and you have to write one of these applications, ideally what you want to do is have as many roles as possible, not one role per user, but one role per kind of a action or functionality. So you want one role to write and if possible one role to write here, one role to write in this other place and then one other role to read. That way if you have a SQL injection problem in a script that reads something from the database, then you're, you're not going to be able to write or modify the database, right? Uh, so, you know, so you can go back to the other? Okay. Um, the the way this works uh, is the, like the way this application works. No matter if you ha if you use one single user, or you or use several users, mm -hmm. is that this is the user that the application is using to authenticate against the database, which is different that my user when my username as a user of the application when again when I authenticate against the application. So in this case, first the application is going to use those kind of static credentials to authenticate against the database and then the application is going to ask me, the user, for my credentials and then using the database uh, connection that has already been established with that uh, static uh, credentials, then it's going to look in this uh, scheme that I've defined to see if I have permissions to do whatever I've done as a programmer in the application. Um, on the, when the application is authenticated uh, using database users, uh, the, it, it goes the other, the other way around. First, the application is going to ask me for my credentials and it's going to use these credentials to establish the connection with the database, all right? And then all that I can do in the database is whichever my user has permissions to do on the database. That's good in those environments in, in which you have the, in, uh, an internal application with single sign on uh, credentials or you are working with internal user and you want to know uh, what is doing every user in your database and so on. So in the previous case, it's impossible to trace from the database uh, who did anything because the trace had, uh, had, uh, had to be done in the web application. So it's different. In one case, is uh, yeah. one one environment is good for one kind of application, and the other one is good for another kind of application. And of course, that environment is uh, is mandatory if you want to manage the database. If you want to manage the database to create tables, to create new databases, to expand uh, table space or, or whatever, you need to manage the database so you need a special connection against the database. This means that pretty much every possible control panel that you can find out there is going to use something similar to this to to work because the user that you're, that you're using when you're authenticating on the application, it is actually a database user. <coughs> um, so as we said before, this is put together in a string and then you're going to do a string concatenation to put all these values together. So uh, the way this works is you get one string with this purse, this value purse with the value equal, like uh, parameter equal value, semicolon, parameter equal value, semicolon. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this semicolon to, as a separator and if this string is, is going to be put together as a, a standard CQL uh, string, then we we're going to be able to add new information here. So now we're going to see what can we do by adding new information. <coughs> uh, this was discovered like the, the fact that this was not the right way of doing it. This is uh, like in uh, this was known something around 2005 and Microsoft was aware of this in 2005. So what they did is they provided the proper way of doing this and the I think it's .NET, uh, ASP.NET 2.0. So since 2.0 you have this uh, SQL connection string builder which is uh, an object that the framework provides and that's how you should do it. You shouldn't do uh, string concatenations to create your strings. And that's secure. The problem is that nobody was aware about how to, uh, how, uh, how to exploit this vulnerability. What can we do if we got a connection string injection into a component? What can be done? In the, uh, when we were uh, starting to, uh, starting this research, we were trying to discover uh, all the information uh, published about this and in OWAS, last September was impossible to discover any, any single reference about connection string attacks or connection string injection and whatever. Nobody was aware about how can we exploit this. So the problem is, is this important? Can be done something important with the semicolon? Is this dangerous? 
So we did it. So you know that this is not how you should put together a string connection, but you didn't know that it's exploitable. So we've, we've been working on a few ways of exploiting it. So um, there's two main things that we're going to do. We're going to use the semicolon to add new parameters, or we're going to use the semicolon to add existing parameters. And I'm going to refer now to something that I guess most of you know because it's been there for a couple of years now, which is HTTP parameter pollution. When you have HTTP parameter pollution, the, the way that works is you are, you, you're going to have one parameter du duplicated. So in your URL, you're going to have uh, twice two different values for the same parameter. Depending on what system you're using, that's going to behave differently. One platform, one, one set of technologies is going to take the first one, another is going to take the second one. The most dangerous one is where sometimes you're going to use the first one and sometimes you're going to use the second one, so you can use that to uh, go over filters in that. Um, so we, we have something very, very similar here. We, actually, we have the same here. We have a parameter. Uh, pollution behavior and the way it works in this case is whichever happens last, that's what counts. So if, I, if in my string I have a value twice, uh, oh sorry, I have two a parameter twice, the second one is gonna, I'm gonna use. So if you look at the slide at the top, that would be my, my string, right? Then if I start reading left to right, I have value A for my first parameter, so that's fine. I have value B for my second parameter. That's fine. But then I repeat my first parameter with value C. Then what's going to happen is that value A is not there anymore. Value C is what counts. And the same for the second parameter. That's quite nice because you can rewrite the whole connection string, which is very good. Uh, and this is how it works. Like the previous slide was a generic example. This is a, uh, uh, how you modify the database connection object uh, through the string. So you first usually have the data source, uh, which would, whichever value. Then you have your username. Then you have your password. But then, as your password, as your password, you can do something semicolon data source equal something different. And then you're changing the database that the application is going to connect to. So. How can you use that? Well, you can use that, for example, to uh, scan uh, servers that you would not be able to scan because there's a firewall. Since the web application server is inside the network and the database server is inside the network, they can connect to each other, but you probably cannot connect to the database from outside or to many other servers from outside because there's a, fir a firewall. However, we've just seen that I can Overwrite the uh, data source parameter with whichever I want. So if in my string I overwrite that to another internal server, I can just um, try to be using this application with uh, development uh, data server with maybe uh, pro uh, data that has not been released so far, uh, important information uh, inside the company like financial things, stuff like that, or even things that are, has been there and are not maintained anymore. Uh, but there's another, uh, well, go ahead. There's another good thing that I can do, which is I can change the data source to a server that I control outside. And since most of the times the firewall is going to be allowing outbound connections, then if I change the data source to a server that I control, I'm actually getting the credentials, like the hash of the credentials. So I can use that to try to, uh, yeah, dictionary tags or whichever. Uh, when you specify the value for the data source, you specify the, port, the server and the port. So same that we've just seen how to scan different servers, you can scan different ports. So the, the, the way it works is exactly the same. After, the, after whichever uh, field in the, data, in, the data, uh, in the connection string where you can inject something, you do semicolon and then uh, override the data source. In this case, uh, trying different ports to do a port scan of a server that was not accessible to you before because of the firewall. Um, that's how you um, change a parameter, right? You, we just change it, the data source to whichever. We've polluted the parameter. But you can also add a new parameter that was not there. The data string, the connection string that we've seen at the beginning is like the most simple string that you, that you can have with those four parameters. But there's more stuff that you can do here. And in this case, you can see that I can use my data source, my username, my password, but then I can uh, inject 
other information that wasn't there before, like integrated security equals true. This parameter is the one that defines the behavior between the two ways of authenticating that, that I've been explaining before. Integrated, uh, integrated security equals no means that I handle the, uh, the authentication by myself inside the database. Authentic integrated security equals true is I'm, I'm going to use system and database uh, accounts for this. So let's see this, uh, this behavior in some demos in real with some commercial products. And first of all, let's analyze what kind of attacks can be done. So the first one, we can steal the system account of the web server. The idea is to steal the hash and it's quite simple. First of all, we need a raw server in which we are going to, to run a SQL server that we, we are able to manage. Then we are activate one sniffer on it and then we only have to rewrite the data source parameter into the connection stream and of course set the integrated security equals to true. That means that the credentials that, that are going to be used are the operating system credentials. And in this case, it's the web application which is uh, try with the one which is trying to connect to the database. And the web application is running on the web server. So the operating system account that is going to be used is the operating system account of the web server. Understood? So it's quite simple. Let's suppose that we got this connection string. So attacker only has to inject something like semicolon data source equals to rocket row server password empty semicolon integrated security equals to true. That's an example with ASP.NET Enterprise Manager, which is a product that is on the internet in a lot of places. And the idea is quite simple. In this example, as you can see, we just use semicolon data source to uh, an API address and then just integrated security equals to true. It's a very bad product. As you can see, you can, you can read the password <laughs> even on the screen. But, and of course you get access, you, if you have kind running on your machine, you can, read, uh, you can read the hash of the, of the system account, which is quite simple. Attack number two, a poor scanning attack. In this example, we are going to uh, duplicate the data, the data source parameter and we are going to use the, as the data source the target server, the, the server that we want to, to scan. So we only have to change the target port and check the error messages. In this example, if we obtain a no TCP connection, that means that the, the port is closed. If we re retrieve a uh, um, uh, no SQL server or no database and discovered, then the port is open. And if we retrieve something like invalid password, then the SQL server is there, which is very good. So in this example, with this connection string against a SQL server 2005, the idea is just to inject something like semicolon data source equals to target server target port in the user ID and in the password just something like semicolon integrated security equal to true. This is a commercial product which is MySQL, my, my little admin and in it you got a, a panel to connect to your database and just trying to discover if Google is answering in the 80 port, you retrieve something like a connection was successfully established with the server and blah, 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 blah. But if you try the 1420 port, you retrieve something like there's, and there's nothing listening there. The third attack is uh, quite simple. The idea is just, okay, the web server has a system account that is in the company, the database is in, is in the company. Why are you asking me a credential? Use your credential and get me in, which is the idea. So duplicate the data source parameter, then set uh, integrated security equals to true, and that's all because the application is going to take its credential to connect again the database, and we are going to have a connection to the application. So the idea is quite simple. Just in this database, in this connection string, only the only thing that we need to inject is data source equals to target server and integrated security equals to true. Quite simple. In this example, web data administrator, which is it was a Microsoft application in 2004. It releases as an open source tool, and right now is uh, is not uh, depending on Microsoft. But the idea is similar; is the same. We got 
the username and password to connect to the database. So data source equals to the database, password uh, set as integrated security equals to true. And then just we get into the control panel. And of course, you get access to all the users and so on. So you can do the same with the rest of the products that we've been uh, seeing before. And in this example, you can see better how it works. This is the connection string information that you can see when you get into a my little admin, uh, my little admin control panel. And in this example, you can see that we got one data source that is pointing to the original database and our data source, which is pointing pointing to the local host server and then the integrated security is equals to no in the original query in the original connection string and in our connection string is set up set to true so in this example the last value wins so it's quite simple and we can do the same of course with the ASP.NET enterprise manager so semicolon data source equals to whatever and semicolon integrated security equals to true and you get into the database. So this we've been talking about uh, how usually .NET applications connect to SQL server uh, uh, databases but this uh, if we want to extend this to other it, MySQL doesn't really <coughs> extend this. Um, you can uh, so doesn't really does, it doesn't support integrated security. But if you're using a uh, .NET application with a connection string to con to to connect to your to MySQL uh, database, you still can do all the other stuff that we're doing, like the port scanning and stuff. Um, with Oracle, it it works. It works uh, all everything that we've said works, like scanning and it, the the whole integrated security. It even works on Unix accounts and. It is also there's a, this sysdba thing that you can use in Oracle to kind of use your users, kind of a super user, to do every administration thing that you want to do in the database. So that's something that you can even do if you if your uh, database here is Oracle. You will just uh, append to your connection string this sysdba thing, and then your user has full control there. So let's see this in action. We got a. Uh, uh, a testing environment in this example is a Windows 2003 and we the, the password and let's open Internet Explorer and let's connect to different parameters so connection string. So let's start with the ASP.NET. <coughs> This is this is the connection string. Uh, this is the control panel for a Microsoft SQL Server. There are a lot of control panel like this on the internet. Any of you are using this software to manage a database? <laughs> no. Well, the idea is quite simple. We need to use only one tool. It's the most powerful tool ever created, which is the Notepad, <laughs> and just integrated security equals true. That's all. Then right button, copy. It's in Spanish but you know, in Spanish. So the user is test, the user is test and we are going to try to, ch to, to uh, duplicate the parameter pollution to local host. In this example it's the same because you can set up a, in this field uh, whatever servers but to do this, we are going to connect to the White House. It's not going to connect to the White House because the last parameter wins, you know. <laughs> and then text integrated security equal to true and connect and that's all. And you get into the control panel. It's so easy. You can do the same on internet. It's so easy just to do doing this. But it's illegal, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so web web data administrator, the same idea. Username um, Palaco. Thank you. <laughs> I love you. Palaco and uh, data source equals to local host. In this example is a uh, it's a SQL, uh, SQL, uh, SQL Server Express edition. So we need to use uh, 
So we need to use to use to use the uh, it's not here. Ah, integrated security equals to true. Just paste and get into okay, and you get into the database and manage whatever. The last one, the, the commercial product, my little admin. That's a uh, SQL. Uh, this, that's uh, that's control panel is using a uh, SQL Server Express. So we need to connect against a SQL Server Express, which is more or less the same, but with localhost slash SQL Server Express. That's it. And right button, paste, connect. And you get access to the database. In the example, we can analyze the connection stream. So, connection. And as you can see here, we got in the first place the original data source parameter, which is pointing to blah, blah, blah. And then we got our data source, that in this case is on the same machine, but you can use. Another machine, and the original integrated security is set to no, but our integrated security is set to two, true. Then the last wins, and we get access to the control panel. And you can do the same with an Oracle application. In this example, it's a it's just a, um, a testing application because it's not. Uh, it's not that common to find on the internet uh, control panels to manage Oracle databases with integrated security uh, enabled. So in this example, it's just a, a testing application that we developed doing the same. So user data source equals to localhost, right button, integrated security equals to true, and you get access to the internal application. Is, is that all? So the the good idea with this is that if something someone is working on your company like a vendor or a partner or whatever or an internal user he can try to do the same with the integrated security parameter the idea is that if he is able to to publish an ASP or JSP um, application on on the web server he is going to be able to try to connect against any database on your company, which is very bad. In a hosting environment in which someone is able to put a file into your server, or maybe he is using FOCA and discover a put option, put method enabled on your website, he can upload and scan it to discover the whole network trying the integrated security connection, connection against the database. It's so simple. So we develop a and a scanner, which is CHPP scanner, which is is uh, is available for download in that URL, and you can try it in your company. So the idea is quite simple: you put the ASP file on your website, and just click the button, and then the application is going to scan the whole network with with the internal IP address, trying to uh, connection string with the integrated uh, security equals to true. And if the, if the application discovers a SQL server, then try to give you an, a SQL query environment in which you can throw your SQL queries against the internal database. So it's quite simple. Let's see this in a demo in our testing environment. So it looks like this. And the idea is that you only have to put this file into R, into the website, then the application is going to check how many network interface you have on the web server and just clicking on on the network interface you can scan the whole network A scan with 100 threads scan SQL servers and now he's going to it is going to try to discover uh, the SQL servers in this case there is only one SQL server which is uh, uh, the one I'm using for the demos, and once it discovered it, 
I only have to click on it and get connection. It's quite simple. So, finishing. All this, uh, all this product, all this uh, commercial software was um, was advised before we released the the talk, and they released an advisory in September. People uh, of my little admin and my little backup, backup released this security advisory about this uh, vulnerability, and it. Uh, it says that there is a new version that fixes one security vulnerability. The good idea is, or the funny thing about this uh, software is, that at the beginning, when we get in con got in contact with with the main developer, he said that wasn't a vulnerability, that wasn't a feature. So, uh, yeah. So it released first uh, a small patch with a minor security minor security update vulnerability because it's minor that anyone can get into your database. It's, it's a minor security. It's not that important. <laughs> your application is running. So that's important. No, no, no. And that guy was very, very nervous at the beginning when we got, we got in contact with him because he was worried about the business. So he uh, counterattacked with a marketing campaign saying, okay, there's a minor security vulnerability or minor security bug, but a lot of companies are using our products, like the US government, GoDaddy, <laughs> the, the <laughs> US Army, US Army again, oh my God. <laughs> That's quite nice because I got the gun, but now I got the, tar the target, so it's, it's quite nice. I love it. <laughs> yeah. That's for you. <laughs> uh, this application is not maintained anymore, so if you are so unlucky to be using this, you're going to have to patch it yourself. So uh, it's basically you just have to go, all, go over the code. Uh, it's actually not very well written, so there's not like a one single place where you go and change it. There's uh, connections and strings all over the place. So you have to go over the code and change these connection and strings for the proper way of doing it with the uh, objects in the framework that we were mentioning before. And the last one is the ASP.NET Web Data Administrator. Original, originally it was a Microsoft application that in 2004 released as an open source project and since that moment Microsoft uh, uh, didn't maintain the software. The problem is that Microsoft was publishing the the old version on the internet and there is a, a small problem with the with the search engine optimization that microsoft has more page rank than open source project so everybody was trying to download the asp.net web data administrator the first link that appears on the web search uh, web engine was the microsoft link so it was a problem because there was no difference between the original, which was unsecure, and the open source project, which is secure. So we got, we got in contact with Microsoft, and Microsoft, in the end, take it off from the internet. So right now, it's impossible to download the unsecure version, which is which is good. And how do you fix this? So give me this. <coughs> Uh, first of all, we've seen that you can do, <coughs> you can steal credentials by allowing outbound connections to your server. So, uh, set up your servers, set up your firewalls correctly, and don't allow connections, outbound connections that you shouldn't. You've also seen that by using integrated security equals true, you can use system accounts to try different servers inside the network. Uh, usually, you don't need that many accounts in all your servers. So, if you could take care of individual servers, what accounts do I need here and there, is going to harden a lot of your organization. Because even with an integrated, uh, with the integ integrated security equals true, if there's no credentials in the other servers, then there's nothing you can do. Um, of course, don't use a string concat concat concatenations. Use the uh, connection string builder object that is provided to you by the framework. And if you don't have any other option, filter the semicolons. And that's all. Questions at room 113. Thanks for all. Thank you.